All right. Welcome back to the Lure Lab. This is episode 20. I can't believe we are already 20 episodes in to the new show here on the Serious Angler Network. As you know, I'm your host, Andrew Fole, and today we have my good buddy on, Mike Schnupp, who lived in Florida for quite a bit of time and became quite proficient at fishing a worm down there. And today we're going to be diving into speed worm fishing. And I'm excited about this episode because Last summer up here in New York, I dabbled around with like a speed worm and a cutter worm and caught a lot of bass with it and actually won a tournament throwing it, which is kind of a rarity up here in New York. So, but without further ado, let's get Mike on here because I know everyone viewing in doesn't want to listen to me talk. You're here for the advice of the guys that know what they're doing. So let's get Mike on. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Just had a recent trip, right? Yeah, man. Went to like Grand Canyon, all these crazy places. I don't even remember, dude. We covered like, I think we put like 750 something miles on the rental car in like three and a half days. Oh, you're booking around that Golden State down there in Arizona. What a pretty place. So I love that state. I want to go back. But yeah, it was time to bass awesome. fish. So, yeah. Uh, as you know, I don't know if you know this, but Deacon just fished the Havasu tournament oh, yeah. out there and he ended up taking 14th in the toyota event so Heck the yeah. business from the bass boat host that was a good one yeah. so you know we'll digress here we're talking speed worm fishing and you lived on basically what the harris chain for a while right yeah i lived i mean depends on what boat ramp but the closest boat ramp i live 15 minutes away mm-hmm. so i mean i could be any one of the furthest boat ramp was um uh venetian gardens and that was like 40 minutes but Mm -hmm. you know that's where most of the events like big big tournaments like the open and tour and stuff like that that's where they go out of but um i always used to put in at hickory point i just liked hickory point because i could go right there and it kind of is right at the end of harris and little harris and uh, yeah i definitely was fishing down there that place was uh awesome well, you don't have too shabby of fisheries around you now. Like, you're pretty close to a bunch of TVA lakes within, like, a half hour to an hour of you, right? Yeah, I mean, I can be to Douglas. I can be to Douglas, Cherokee, Norris, Loudoun. I can be to all those lakes in, like, 40 minutes or less. Um, about an hour and a half from Chick, about three hours from Gunnersville. Um I mean, I could be to Pickwick. You know, Pickwick's not too, too far away. Kentucky Lake's probably about three and a half, four hours away. You're in the mecca of bass fishing. You left the giant bass to go to slightly smaller bass, but probably more abundance. I yeah. So. Yeah, I would think so. Um, you know, and the cool thing is like, if I want to go smallmouth fishing, I can go smallmouth. If I want to go, you know, catch spotted bass, you know, like, so the variety is cool. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, I still have big bass here. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, but florida obviously you have more of a chance of catching that eight plus um which i've caught several on the speed worm uh, yeah which is exciting <laughs> have you thrown the speed worm in tennessee yet to be honest no i have not um i fished i'm trying to think fished a lot of douglas this past this past uh like late spring summer because baseball kind of kills my fishing um and i fished loud and once and i think i fished chick just two two weekends ago or something it was brutally cold um so i i haven't thrown it i didn't get around grass actually you know what last year i did throw it um i fished uh the upper river of cherokee lake and i fished it because it was like a lot of grass it looked real florida ish i guess seed wormy ish so- yeah Got it. Well, let's dive right into it, right? Like rod, reel, and line setup. What so, is the combo of choice when throwing a speed worm and why? Switch this around here so you guys can see. I don't know if you can see that. It's really tough to see. Um, so this is the Icon, the Cash and Icon. This is their, what they call it's right there somewhere. There you go. The worm jig rod. This particular one's a 7.3 medium heavy. Um, it says it's I guess rated 14 to 25 pound, three eighths to an ounce. And I have it teamed up with a, a lose uh, speed spool. It's the, I think it's the ones of tournament pro. I can't remember. I'd be lying to you, but 
Um, it's it's a you know this one here. I can't. It's gonna be super hard. But anyways, it's an eight three to one ratio. Perfect. Um, is like faster better then? I'm sorry. Is faster better on a gear ratio for fishing this um, year? Really, like a seven three to one or like a seven five to one. I use an eight three, and this is gonna sound really stupid, but it it's not. I use a faster gear ratio to force me to slow down. Hmm. If that makes sense, right? So like I I use it because it's like okay, I know this reel is really fast. I have to slow down, and so. I slow it down a lot, but I like the eight, three to one, because when you, you know, you feel that little, you know, that tick, tick or that bump, you know, you, just a few turns and I got, you know, three, mm -hmm. three to eight feet of, of line, you know, back towards me. Um, so when they eat it a lot of time with the speed worm, they're probably pushing the bait and running at you, I'm guessing. So that gear <laughs> ratio can help you lean into them. Yeah. It's just like, you know, sometimes I'll bomb a lot of casts, you know, try to try to get you know, I try to like to get back as far away from the fish as I can um, or the areas I know where they're at just to cover so that middle fun. ground. I can cover everything, you know. Yep. Um, so with my setup, too, with the line, I use anywhere from 15 to 17 pound line. It depends on where I'm fishing. Florida, it was pretty much constantly 17 pound. Um, and I used, you know, just a little bobber stop. Uh, so I got those. And I use, so the thing is, is I use angler tungstens, which I love because they have, you know, they have them, uh, they're all stamped. It's going to be really hard to see that, but we'll see if I can get it up there. If it'll focus. There you go. It's not focusing too well, but I can see the stamp. That says what, 3 16th? Yeah, it's a 3 16th. So I use a 3 16th pretty much religiously unless unless the wind's really moving because florida you know it can it can definitely stir up mm -hmm. um, really well and then i'll switch it up to a quarter but for the most part i think the 316th is key gives it a slower fall ratio but what i like like about it too is when i'm fishing a, a magnum speed worm that's normally what i fish um and i just picked i picked this color today red bug um, uh, so this is the, you know, Magnum UV, they call it the UV vibe speed warning, right? So I picked red bug because right now you got the MLF and invitational going on, on Okeechobee and red bug for me was better on Okeechobee than anywhere else. Um, I, on Harris chain, I fished a lot of June bug red, some watermelon candy and some, you know, red bug, but I feel like in Okeechobee when I fish the tour event down there and stuff, I got a lot better, uh, a lot, a lot more bites on it. Actually, do you think I, it's because it was different from everyone throwing like the black and blues and June bugs? So like, just showed differently in the water. Or is the water color at Okeechobee slightly different than the rest of Florida? Um, Okeechobee has like some clear areas. So does Harris Chain. I mean, because Harris Chain's got all those natural springs. Mm -hmm. Um, but. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Like, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was practicing and my back was killing me. You know, people that know me know my, all my issues, my, my body. But uh, sorry. I, yeah. I was laying on the back deck of the boat, just literally laying because that was so much pain. And I just fired out. I just switched it up to red bug for some reason, I guess. And dude, I was, I was like, man, I was like, I got one. So I set the hook laying down. I reeled it. It was like a little, you know, pound and a half, two pounder. But then I kept getting more and more bites on it. And I was like, dude, this is it. This is this is the go-to color. Hmm. Um, and so it helped out a lot. So basically what I do is is I use two bobber stops. You know, a lot of guys use one. I use two. I feel like it keeps that weight pegged a little more. Um, so I put the two on there. Uh, slide those up. You know, slide them up pretty far. And then obviously you want to get your tungsten. You know, put your tungsten on. And what I, and this is going to sound weird, I guess. It's maybe, it's just a personal thing. I like to use a wide gap four aught hook. Oh, is um, that your hook? That's your hook preference is a wide gap hook instead of like a hybrid worm hook? Yes. I don't like the hybrid worm hook. And I'll show you why here in one second. 
So I tie it, you know, I tie a basic polymer knot. That's how I tie, you know, this. If I'm, you know, flipping it or something, I'll change the knot up a little bit. But I feel like a polymer knot just for this setup is is good. It's quick. It's easy. Um, you know, I, I don't have very many breakoffs at all hmm. with this. Um, so then, so then you take. If you can see, there's mm -hmm. the way you take the two bobber stops and I cinch it down, right? So this way, that weight's not going anywhere. A lot, some guys will unpeg it. I prefer pegged. It helps get through the grass a lot better. Um, some guys have different preferences on how they rig this. Uh, some guys will rig it, you know, on here like this with the tail. Oh, sorry. The tail flat this way. Okay. Some guys will rig it with the tail up, so it gives it more of an action. Me personally, are you a tail down guy? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I am. You know, it's it's a it's a personal thing. Like I I line the tail up like you know, like I said, flat. And I don't know, you know, I don't know if you get more bites. Do I don't know, you know. But then I just Texas rig it, you know, just kind of bury that hook in there just a little not a whole lot um pose and honestly sometimes i'll go to a five odd hook um because you know you're using this giant worm uh, sometimes i'll use a five just because if they're like kind of if i feel like they're not getting it very well i'll switch to a five and i don't know it might be just a mental thing with me but i feel like a hook up so back to the the reason why i use a wide gap Okay, so when that fish, if you can see that, I'm trying to see here. So when that fish bites and that worm slides or that worm moves down, right? I got all this room right here. You know, that's a that's a about a finger gap. Yeah. So, but if you're using like a regular worm hook, I feel like your gap is about right there. So let me ask you this question, Mike, with because that's yep. the Magnum speed worm, right? Like, what if you went with your, yes. like, your traditional speed worm? Would you then go to the hybrid worm hook or would you stay with a wide gap? I'd stay with a wide gap. <laughs> okay. I'm a wide gap guy, I guess. I don't I don't know. I just I feel personally because, you know, I used to use the worm hook and I felt like I felt, you know, I'd feel the bite set the hook and I could just feel the worm kind of like pull off the hook or mm -hmm. you know or pull, and i could just feel it and i'm like man I i'm not getting as many hookups yeah you know, some guys will say hey they like you know that tiny little bit of a gap on a traditional bend you know worm hook because it pinch you know it pins against the fish's mouth because the worm's kind of supporting it that's just not the case for me but that again that's just that's me um, well, that's fishing. Fishing is confidence. You have to yeah. fish, but you have confidence. In and it. I have so much confidence in, in this dang thing. But, you know, uh, with with the tail, too, you know, um, there there's several different ways to fish a speed worm. And, again, I'm just going off of my preference. And, and uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm my way the right way or anything like that, but it's a personal preference, is I like, I like to um, – kind of warm it, you know, just, just, you know, you throw it out there, just kind of, you know, pick it up, kind of let it fall like, like a Texas rig worm, you know, almost like yeah. a, just a yo-yo and let it fall on slack line real a couple yeah, times. Yeah. So, so basically, basically if I can get this in here, so gee, I just smacked my monitor with my thing here. Yeah. It's good with tungsten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going like fat cat style, you know, putting holes and stuff, but, uh, so basically, so if I cast it out there, it falls, right? And I just kind of do this with my line. I just kind of mm -hmm. pop it, you know, just hop it, get and let it, it fall, reel in the slack, just kind of hop it back up. And I'm pulling it through that grass. And I feel like you get, you know, a lot more bites that way. But now, I mean, there are times where they want it, they want it moving, you know, and you're just kind of slow rolling it through the grass. And then we just, Hit the right piece of grass, you know, one will one will come come unglued on it. You know, yeah. 
Um, but for me, I've had I've had more success doing it. You know, just just worming it. You know, like truly, truly worming it. And that's I don't know. I like to fish it too. I like to make like a really far cast, let it sink, and then just slowly hop and let it fall on slack line, catch up to it, hop. And I feel like a lot of times they'll eat it when you drop it on that slack line and you don't feel them until you start to reel again. As you go to hop, it just gets heavy. You just lean. Yeah. So. And I think, I think too, now, now I will say this, you know, I've had it to where I've thrown and I reel and you feel dunk. And then you like wait and you go to set the hook and there's nothing there. You reel again, same thing. And it's like, okay. And then I slow it down and, you know, go back to worming and then they end up just, mm -hmm. you know, holding on to it. Yeah, now fish tell you what they want yeah because i mean there, now there's been plenty of times where you know i'm stubborn i like to worm it that's just my preference and and been times where i'm not getting bit and i'm like dang it now i'll reel it in go make another cast and almost slam it i'm like okay now i gotta get it moving you know but but like i said nine times out of ten i worm it um and you know it'll catch smaller fish but it it'll catch you know big fish um i'll give you a, an example i mean i've caught like a caught a eight pounder in a tour event on Harris chain, you know, using a speed worm. Um, you know, I've caught several big ones in tournaments on it, but, um, but a prime example, I was fishing a tour event as a co-angler and I had, I don't remember who I drew that day. I cannot think who it was, but long story short, we flew up to a spot and, you know, my boater was throwing a jerk bait and I picked up the speed worm and I, I start catching them. They weren't, you know, giants, nothing like that. Um, but I caught a quick limit pretty quick. Well, you know, the school wasn't really fired up in that area. So we go and we fish and, you know, kept fishing, caught some bigger ones, uh, the speed worm, come back to that spot. And James Watson was there and he was throwing like a lipless. And I mean, he's literally every single cast just catching them and they were like two pounders maybe you know and so we we kind of came in there james was like yeah go ahead you know whatever we we're and that you know he's throwing a trap my boater's throwing a trap I'm like dude i'm picking up a speed worm you know i'm slow something down and dude i you know first cast like a three and a half pounder next cast like three and a half four pounder and they're catching like one and a half two pounders and I was catching like the threes and fours on the speed worm. So, you know, it's just, it's a Florida staple. I mean, but it'll work. Like I said, it works anywhere we have grass and you can just kind of get through there. Um, like I said, I, I love fishing here in New York. I got, I wouldn't say I'm like great at it, but I feel like I got pretty proficient at it, but it has to be fished around like the right type of grass too, but it's one of those baits that will come through any type of cover. But I yeah. found up here in New York, like you needed a mix of milfoil and coontail to really get a shot at catching fish on it. And I don't, and I know down in Florida, they catch them out of, like out of eel grass, kissimmee right. grass, yeah. like whatever grass there is. You'll catch them. Stuff. Yeah. They just need, it needs to be fished around grass in yeah. my opinion. And, and, and here's the, you know, here's another thing, you know, I was fishing a different, it was a different tour event. It might've been open. I can't remember. Um, but we were back in a canal and the water's clear, you know, and it's, you can see six feet deep and I mean, they were spawning, they were everywhere, just cruising. Well, my boater pulled up on this one to nose in on the bed and I'm looking down below me and there's, there's one like a two pounder sitting on the bed. Hmm. And, Plop that speed worm out there and just let it come down. And I mean, dude, they ate it instantly. So, um, so you can fish it in the open water too. Um, but preferably in the grass or on the grass edges. Um, you know, that, that to me is the, the key. If you're going to like a little bit clearer water, like there's certain areas in Harris where I would fish, um, where the water be, you know, a lot more clear, I would go and switch to like a watermelon red or the watermelon candy. But, uh, I'd say a good 80 to 90% of the time was the June bug red. It's just yeah. June bug. It's a great color. Yeah. <laughs> like up here in New York, like I, the two colors I threw were June bug and red bug. And it yeah. seemed like 
if they wanted to bite one, they wouldn't bite the other. But you always had to have both because they would bite one. Like, am I making sense here? They would either oh, yeah, bite 100%. one or the other. But yeah. I also found um, in the cutter worm, the Strike King cutter worm, yep. that the green pumpkin, like, blue swirl. The green pumpkin blue swirl. That's my that, favorite color. That got me a lot of really big bites last summer when they wouldn't eat anything else. I could swim that cutter worm and do really well. So, which leads me into the next question. What speed worms or speed worm style worms do you like? I know we went over the Magnum speed worm, but are there any other ones that you? Yes, I definitely like the cutter worm. Um, it just, it just, you know, the way, the way, obviously, the Strike King, the Rage series, you know, whatever they got that little lip on the on the edge of everything, and I feel like that just gets a little different vibration, a little bit different movement um, than the than the speed worm, and and. I'll be honest, you know, there's been some times where I've thrown the Magnum speed worm and they'll just rip the tail off and I'll have just like basically a cutter worm and I throw it out there and catch more fish. So I go and turn and, you know, switch to a cutter. Um, but those two. And then, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't use bitters, bitters bait and tackle. I mean, they're down there in Florida um, and he makes a nice one. It's like a it's like a black and blue, like a blue tip. You know, just just the you know the, the tail end of it is 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 a blue, um, and that's that's a really good color too up there or down there I should say. Yeah. Um, but those those two are my go to for sure. It'd be the zoom and, and and the strike king cutter worm, um, and then bitters. Like I said, it just depends on on the water clarity, etc. But gotcha. So. You know, we're talking mostly Florida here with the speed worm, right? But as water warms across the country, do you feel like this is a beneficial lure or technique that people could use to put fish in the boat just wherever they are if they have grass? 100%. Yeah. And like I said, I, I, feel, I feel like you could use it in areas where you don't have grass, too. You yeah. know, I mean, like like Santee Cooper, you know, it, you know, you can use it around there. You know, the cypress trees, a lot of people do wacky rig, you know, because that's just what it's known for. Um but you can definitely catch them, you know, happen down there. Balls and stuff. Yes, yes. I mean, even in Harris, like Harris, you know, like, you know, you, you know, um, oh my goodness, I have a brain fart. Uh, the, the trees, but the, I can't even think what they're called right now. I'm having a brain dump, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, like all the moss trees and all that stuff. And, yeah. Gotcha. And fish them there, um, isolated reed clumps, you know, stuff like that. Uh, that's how I caught my my eight in the tournament. You know, I saw an isolated reed clump in the mix of the Kissimmee grass and swim it through. Yep. Oh, this sounds like fun. Sign me up. So, mm -hmm. well, before I ask you the last question, do you have any other little tidbits that you want to give before I ask you the do it molds question? <laughs> man um or is that the tidbit because we talked about the question before show so do you want me to just ask you that question now yeah go ahead just all right. Let's, let's go so, all right mike so you know the final question is customized by do it molds and it's a place that if you've never created your own tackle or you want to create tackle you want to check out the do it molds website because you can build all of your own speed worms if you want it i believe they yeah. actually have a speed worm mold type worm mold that would be really cool but um what is the one tip of advice you could give someone who has fished a speed worm or is wanting to fish a speed worm to help them put more fish in the boat or on the bank best tip. Trick question yeah it is it's like a it's like a like a double-edged sword there uh, <laughs> um man honestly you know like I said, it, I said it earlier, you know, let, let the fish kind of tell you if they want it moving fast or they want it slow. You know, um, I feel, I mean, this is how confident I feel in, in the speed worm is if you're around, if you're, if there's fish there, you'll catch them on a speed worm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I feel confident enough to where that's anywhere in the United States. You know, it doesn't matter. Like I said, if grass is there, if grass is not there, I just, I just think, you know, that movement, and I feel too, the way, it, the reason why it works a lot better in Florida too, is, is they got needlefish, you know, and, and it's, I'm not going to say the speed more mimics it, but I mean, it's pretty, 
pretty dang close. That's why they're like big sinkos there too, I'd imagine. But but um mm-hmm. but point. I feel like like I said, I feel I feel like, you know, like I said earlier, around trees, around stuff, you know, just I'd I'd fish it. My best tip would be to fish it slow first. For sure. I feel like you just get way more more bites just fishing it. Just like just a regular worm. You know? Got it. Yeah. That's um that's the only way I can ever really get them to bite. I will say though, before you go, I did get one bite along a dock last summer, and I think you would love this one. I was almost <laughs> swimming the cutter worm, the big seven inch yeah. one, like a buzz bait and making like a bubble oh, yeah. trail. And one came yeah. out from the end of a dock and smoked it. And yes. I was like, that so, was one of the coolest bites I've ever seen in my life. So I didn't really want to give that tip out there, but I guess uh, <laughs> you know, since I unleashed the since you unleashed it, um a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um I I you know if at that time, like especially so like 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 for instance, like when they start spawning and, and, and everything and they're getting in there and they'll get in some pads and some different things that you can't see them. Um, you know, you get those shallow like penny warts and they're all around. Man, I I I fired up there just keep it across the top of the water. And it looks it looks almost like it looks ridiculous, but it almost looks like a snake. Yes. In a way. And, it, yeah. and, the, and the way the you know, the way the tail is, it just it creates that bubble. It's it's almost I don't want to say it's like a whopper plopper, but it gives that type of type of action out there. Um I do that a lot with the speed worm, and I also do it a lot with like the gambler well down in Florida, you know, like the big easies and the mm-hmm. easies. It's the same, same, same concept, really. But man, they will they will nine times out of ten, if they're up in that stuff, they will show their face for sure if you throw that up there. And so many times I've thrown it and they, you know, just kind of blow it up on it because it was maybe on a bed. And I would just pitch back in there and then I end up catching them. Love it. Yeah. There, I forgot who I was talking about, like buzzing a speed worm last year. I was fishing with someone. Oh, it, I actually, it might have been Wes Logan when he came up and we fished together. We were talking about like trying to figure out how to get a speed worm to like buzz across the surface. Yeah. And I figured it out like late in summer that I found you have to go heavier line than you traditionally would. And you have to go down to like, a 16th ounce tungsten weight and you just want that baby just like skirting skirt and, yep and when they eat that thing like whew, a lot yeah. of times like they'll miss it but they show themselves you know right where to throw and you can go in there yes. like a jig or something you can get them to bite instantly. yeah so. and so so i will say too like because that just reminded me like you know it's santi cooper uh, we're just using a regular speed worm not the magnum and we would we would go out there and I mean, you got giant, giant pads, you know, and, and that's what we do. We, we buzz it across the top and then you find a hole and you just drop just kill it. it. And then they go, I mean, normally they're sitting in those, in those, those holes or, or they're following it and tracking it. And then you got an empty hole and that's, Easy that'd be the, up. be a good tip right there for sure. It's fun. So, yes, all right, Mike. Well, awesome. thanks for coming on today, man. I I know I took you away from a bunch of busy stuff, and I know you just got home from a trip, so I greatly yeah, appreciate good. it. I'm going to miss you at the Classic this year because we won't be there. But, but uh, hey, we'll see you at Redcrest, right? Yeah, I'll be at Redcrest, yeah. so I'll see you there. We'll you I'll be there for an entire week, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. So I think it's what, see- like a month away? Mm, like Age? two and a half weeks, three weeks, because February short, March – I think we fly down March seventh. Yeah, so a month away. I thought it was February nineteenth already. So oh, yeah, yeah. Like, no, today's my daughter's away. birthday. So it's oh, nice, funny. happy birthday to her. So yeah, yeah. No. Oh. Oh, aren't we all? So all right, yeah. Mike. Well, I'll let you get out of here. Get back to having fun with your car that you're building, and we'll t- we'll chat soon, buddy. All right, buddy. Thank all you guys right. so much. Yeah, have a good day. All right, man. See you. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for tuning into this week's episode of the Lure Lab, where we talked about speed worm fishing. Um, I just want to throw a couple notes in there that the speed worm is not just a Florida technique. You can catch fish on it anywhere that you want. We wanted to bring it up and talk about it because all the major tournaments are happening right now in Florida with the Invitational Series at Okeechobee and the BPT going to Florida and the Elites going on Okeechobee here. It's going to be, if you tune into live, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of fish caught on a speed worm. 
So that was the preface of this episode. We're still in the winter mode down there. It's winter pre-spawn spawn. There might even be some post-spawn fish going on. But as always, if you are tuned in on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below of what your favorite speed worm is, maybe even your speed worm setup. Um, and give us a thumbs up. It helps this video be seen to everyone else who is looking to learn more about speed worm fishing. If you're listening or tuned in on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of your favorite MP3 podcast platform, if it allows you to leave a rating and a review, please do. We greatly appreciate that as well. And we'll see you guys next Saturday.